of Chad Vasquez here at Evolution Muay Thai, NYC. So the first thing I want to show is a warm-up that will be very good for your hips and lower back. Uh, the names for them, the first movement is called Iron Crosses, and the second one are called Scorpion Stretches. Okay, first the warm-up. This will be very important for your hips and lower back. So first one, Iron Crosses. What you need to do, lie on your back, head down, legs straight, arms out like so, palms up. The idea is, without moving your upper body, bring your opposite foot to your opposite hand. And I try my foot touch my hand. As you can see, my head, my back, my hands stay on the floor as much as possible. As you're doing this, if you cannot touch your, your foot to your hand due to flexibility issues, that's fine. Just go as far as you can. The next one is scorpion stretches. Same idea, except you'll be on your chest, your back, or your stomach. So you see my form? Legs are straight on the floor, palms down, chest down. As I do the stretch, same idea. Bring the opposite foot to the opposite hand. And you can see in my movement, I'm trying to make sure my chest stays down as much as possible. Again, if you cannot reach your, your hand, just go as far as you can. You'll gain your flexibility over time. I recommend 30 reps before you move into your, your workout. Now, the next seven movements I'm going to show that will be important for your jiu -jitsu training will all be done from a seated position. The first thing that you should know how to do and practice are break falls. This is a very simple way of learning it from a seated position here. I'll demonstrate it first and then I'll highlight certain details you should know. Details. Chin down, look into your stomach. As you rock back, you want to make sure that your head does not touch the floor. In training, if you get thrown or uh, aggressively swept and you have a bad habit, you bring your head back, you can't hurt yourself with your head hitting the mat during sparring. So, chin down, notice when I rock back, I stop within my shoulder line so my head does not touch. Now, what helps me do that is my hands. If I bring my hands out at a 45 degree, it prevents me from going too far back so my head will not touch the floor. So look at my hands, how they work. They act as brakes to stop your head from hitting the mat. The next big important thing is the ability to keep your back bent. This is a very important skill you must develop in different movements for your jitsu game. So, if you notice, I keep my knees close to my chest as I rock back. This, this movement, I like to refer to as a rocking chair effect. You need to be able to hold your core still so that you do not have that habit. This, as you can see, can become a big issue when you start sparring and you get thrown or swept. So if, it's, if that's a challenge to you, a little thing you can do before you do the break fall is just rock back and forth by keeping your knees close to your chest. If you need to use your hands to assist you, you can do that. So I'll actually lean in forward, have me touch my knees, and as I rock back, just practice that. As you get better with it, then you add the rest of your form for your break fall. Chin down. This will be movement one, and we'll build off of once you come to this. Basic break falls going backwards from a seated position. Chin down, making an X here. This gives me the direction of where my hand should go. And now I rock back. Keep my knees close to my chest. Those are basic seated break falls. Now, we're going to build off that last movement. We're going to have you work on that break fall like you did and add a technical stand up. This will also finish the last part of this movement, will finish with a standing break fall. Okay, here we go. So the first part, you've done, you solved, which is this. 
basic seated break ball. Main details, do not have your head touch the floor. So what we do, head looks down. Hands act as brakes to stop your head from touching the floor. Back is bent so you can have a good smooth rock so you don't land with a flat back. Now, once you do that, you'll rock up and get a form like so. You pick one hand on the floor and the opposite leg will face outside. My other two limbs will act as frames. If you can imagine, imagine me holding someone off as they're trying to put pressure on me. Now from here, it's very important that when I start trying to stand up, whether it's on my knee or my foot, my chest put points towards the floor, right? So from here, I lift my chest to the floor. This allows me to base my foot or my knee. You hear coaches use different language for this. If I go on my knee, coaches would usually refer to it as a, as a, as a hip heist, right? Or, or a, a rear hip heist. If I go to my foot, which is what we're gonna do, you, call it, you hear coaches call this a technical stand up. We're gonna focus on a technical stand up for this first movement. So, base, point towards the floor of your chest, and this allows you to move your foot back. And now, I stand up. Now, now, from here, watch how we do the whole thing again using a standing uh, break ball to a technical stand up. So, here you go. Hands make an X. Look down to your stomach. And this already starts you off for a good form when you're about to go to the floor here. I'll best show on the side. So, hands like this to make sure you have a good angle of where your hands should go to uh, base on the floor so you don't walk back. So, here I am. Here's my form. Squat as, as far as you can go. Now, my butt touches. And I rock right back up. Keep my knees as close to my chest as possible. And now I go back to the same base. Chest points towards the floor. And this allows me to better move this leg behind me, whether it's my knee or my foot. For us, we'll go for our foot as far as you can. And now I come back to where I was originally facing. All right, so the next two movements will be basic big circles and advanced big circles, okay? And these movements will be very beneficial on developing coordination on how to move your legs in a circular motion, and it'll be very important for different types of sweeps you'll learn, whether it's no gi or gi, okay? Um, and they're also a great warm up to gaining um, flexibility and, and range of motion for your hips as you keep on training. So we'll first go over basic big circles, okay? On my back, legs go in a V-shape. From here, I'm gonna circle them and have my hands to touch the floor. So here's a basic big circle. Feet come up, and that's it. Bottom leg, if you notice, stays tucked towards my butt. Top leg just gets a base. Both hands just touch. That's it. Now I rewind back. Uh, try to just do this and just kind of go forward and just sit back. Try to rewind the way you came. So from here, and now as I go flat to my back, this leg will start to circle again to the other direction. And that's it. Make sure your feet do, or your legs rather, do not come close together. The next one now will be advanced big circles. These are a little tricky, take time with it, go slow. So, it starts off the same way on the last move, which are basic big circles, right? So you saw it previously, I was on my back, legs go into a D shape, and I circle to make contact. From here, you're going to continue the circle. Watch as my bottom leg stays where it is, and my top leg will continue to move around as I bring my chest towards my bottom knee. My hands follow, and I go for that stretch here. And now I bring my back to my back. Remember, I, just, I don't just sit back up. I try to keep that circular motion as I recover, and I go again to the other side. So watch. See, so I roll to my shoulder. Now this leg follows up. Basic to advance. 
and not trying to come straight up, just working in this circular motion. All right, different angle. Basic, and now I continue the circle. Stretch. This is a great warm up if you're gonna do a workout at home. This really does a great job on keeping the coordination and loose up your hips later in your jiu-jitsu training. Now this next one's a little tricky. Go slow, make sure you have space when you're doing this. From, again, we're doing these drills starting from a C position where you either lie back or do moves from here. We're gonna learn how to practice inversions from a seated position. Okay. If I was to roll over this shoulder, my left shoulder, my left side, I'll tuck in my left foot. Arms, elbows rather, stay tucked in. Now, I'm gonna bring my shoulder to the floor. Using my bottom foot, I'm gonna push my butt up over my head and catch my, myself on two of my shoulders. So the motion looks like this. Now I use my bottom foot, and now I bring it over, okay? If you need help, if you're losing your balance here, use your elbows and your hands to hold your back. Now from here, hold your stretch for about a couple seconds, three seconds, and now butt drops, and you recover back to a seated position. You can do the same side in different angles. Staying to my left side. Tuck the foot. Make sure I have a good base on the side of my foot on the floor. Front foot is based like so. And my elbows stay tucked in towards my rib cage slash hips. Now, leaning forward, remember I don't want my back straight. I want to curve my spine. I'm going to base my left shoulder to the floor. Look what my bottom weight does to help my hips come up. Put my shoulder now. Push, and I bring my knees over my head. Use my hands, catch my hips, and hold that stretch for a couple seconds. For that, I was just doing one side. Of course, do both sides. Keep it simple. I recommend a five reps on one side, five on the other. This is a good, simple way to start training you how to work on rolling to your shoulders in a invert position. That'll be very important for defensive and offensive purposes. Okay, so we're gonna do a leg over active stretch. All right. So we're gonna have you go on your back. I'll show from the side. All right. So watch. Lower body, the knees will come towards the chest first, then you use your feet to kick yourself over. The goal is to bring your lower body, your lower back, off the floor and balance yourself on your shoulders. So there we go. Knees, so that's the first motion. And now, feet. Now, I have enough range of motion where I can touch the floor. If that's not the case for you, it's okay. Go as far as you can and make this part of a warm up and for different activities and you'll gain that range of motion. So, knees, feet. Knees, feet. And that's the goal. Trying to have your lower body come over and touch the floor. These are very basic leg over active stretches. You can assist the movement with a bit of a stretch in between. If you feel you're comfortable holding your balance on your shoulders, you can take your hands to grab your feet and pull them towards the floor if you feel that you don't have enough range of motion to have your feet touch the floor. Looks like this. So when you're comfortable with that first motion to help assist your stretch, I can pull it towards the floor. Hold it about three or four seconds 
and then back down. So I can't reach, I'll grab it and pull it towards the floor. So we're going to take that last movement, the leg over active stretch, and we're going to have you do a more advanced version where you combine two other type of movements. One movement I like to call windmills, and the second movement or uh, figure four with your legs, which are, we use for uh, weapons like triangle chokes. We should probably do the first two by themselves before we add them to the leg over active stretch. So let's do windmills first. Four windmills. If you're in your back, legs up, like almost big circles. Now the goal is to keep your elbows, arms touch your body, and circle your feet over each other. Three of my joints are moving here, right? So not just my feet, but my knees and my hips. And this is a great warm up because we use a lot for your guard, open guard uh, work, whether defense or offense. Work on both directions as you warm up with this movement. You can see my feet come near both my knees, they don't touch anything. And also my feet go over each other as my hips move and my knees move and my feet move. Now next are solo triangle drills or figure four drills of your legs. If you're super new to this, a good way to start practicing is just simply go on your back and just practice on locking your legs up. Like so. Key details, you may notice, I'm not doing this. I'm not bringing my toes down. I'm trying to have my knee catch her over my ankle. You can see that little space there, my feet are up, that's very important. When you're sparring and you're doing triangle chokes, you don't, you want to try to avoid locking like so. This could put a lot of pressure on your ankle, and you can injure yourself. I've actually, once first training, I made that mistake, and I almost really hurt my ankle. And so I learned the hard way. So I really advise you, as you practice your form, do not lock your leg over your foot. So again, this is a basic way of just practicing your form. Furthermore, you may notice that I keep my knees not super wide, but close to each other. This will be very important for your chokes when you start learning how to cover the shoulder, the neck for an effective squeeze. So again, now watch how we take those two movements and we combine it with the leg over uh, active stretch we did before. So we'll do the windmills first. Movement one, windmills. Working both directions. Movement two, figure fours. Touch, catch the hips. Okay. If you have a training partner at home, and let, let's say someone who has not trained Jiu Jitsu, there's a drill that you can do with them. It doesn't require much of them. All, just tell your, tell your partner just to keep the legs a certain way, which I'll explain soon, and we'll go over some guard passing footwork. So here are my partners, Mr. Levi. All right, all I'm gonna have him do is my training partner. It's nothing crazy. All I'm gonna do is keep his feet up, pointed towards me. So I'll do the square stance. That's all my partner's gonna do, okay? Now, guard passing has, let's say, four main directions. Going around, between, behind, and over the legs. For this exercise, We'll just do three of those four movements. All right, first one, going around the legs. 
In a square stance, your hands will control either the ankles or the shins. Again, trade partner, just stay still. That's all I have to do. Now, you'll practice a movement for a guard pass referred to as a toriando guard pass. So, look at my feet. If I go to my left, left leg steps out. This gives me space for my inside leg to do a cross step. I try to step as far past it as possible. My back leg now finishes the exercise by stepping in a square stance and I'm facing my partner like so. Now, rewind back, tracing back the same steps. And now, the other side. One, two, see I turn my toes towards my partner, and I step out, three, in this stance here. A little speed. Three. So that's movement one, it's going around the legs. Movement two, going inside the legs. Headquarters. Reverse headquarters, okay. Hands show either the ankles or shins. And from here, you can practice on your partner's legs to a certain angle. If I do standard headquarters, that means my, in this case, my right leg goes to the same side as my partner. If I do a reverse headquarters, in this case, my right leg goes to the opposite side to my training partner. Look at my footwork. Standard. I do it on both sides. It's very important that I go inside first and my knee is as much as it can behind my partner's knee. Other leg steps just within his knee line. Please don't overstep. That's a bad habit that leave your partner, excuse me, They'll leave you exposed for your partner grabbing your other leg. Reverse headquarters. Same leg, I go across. My knee now stays pointed towards the center line. This hand goes to the hip. Elbow stays tucked in. And that's it. Other side. Now put two of them together. One. Two. One, two. That's movement two, working inside. Now lastly, our leg drags. This will position you to get behind your partner's legs. So for example, I'll grab the ankle here, pull it across my center line. Now I create an opening. From here, the same side leg steps behind that far knee. One, and do a small step, just stop myself within my partner's hip line. And my hands can stop right to the knees. And now rewind back. One, two, three, touch. Oops, sorry. Move the leg. And every time you see, I'm just stopping within the hip line. These are nice, simple drills to play with someone to work these positions for guard passing, especially if your partner's not well trained. All you have to have your partner do is keep your feet up and just go slowly through the footwork. 